Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number eight. Lesson number eight in the series of ten videos on the topic of linear equations. Linear equations. And today is our day number 155. Let's see what we have for today. As soon as I put the as soon as I put the equation on the blackboard, I insist that you pause the video at that point and do the problem yourself first. Always do the problem yourself first. Here we go. There is the first problem. We are told that 3 times x plus 7 over 11 minus x minus 9 over 5 equals x equals x. Again, as I said before, what I want you to do right now is to pause the video, do the problem yourself. Once you have the answer, you can resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Compare the two work and see if you can find some ways of finding shortcuts, find, find ways of saving yourselves a few seconds in the real exam. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and pause the video. Here we go. Three times x plus 7 over 11 minus x minus 9 over 5 equals x. Well, the first thing we need to do, first thing we need to do is to get rid of this 11 and the 5 from the bottom. 11 and the 5, the smallest number that is, a, that, that is divisible by both 11 and 5 is 55. So let's multiply this entire equation. Let's multiply this entire equation by 55. We're going to multiply this entire equation by 55, every single thing, and this we were told equals x. So since we multiply this side, of the, this side, since we multiplied both terms on this side of the equation, on the left-hand side of the equation by 55 and 55, we have to multiply the right side of the equation by 55 as well, in order to make sure that the equation remains balanced. That's it, we're done. Now we can do our division and get rid of 11. Divide top and bottom by 11, 11 is going to go away and 55 is going to become 5. And then we're going to end up with 5 times 3, 5 times 3, 5 times 3, times x plus 7. Minus, let's divide top and bottom by 5, and 55 is going to become 11. And we'll end up with 11 times x minus 9. 11 times x minus 9 equals 55x. Let's open the parenthesis. 15 times x is 15x plus 15 times 7, how much is 15 times 7? 15 times 7, how the hell do I know? I know 15 times 5 is 75, 75 and a 30. Looks like 105. 75, I know it's 15 fives are 75. How do I know? How do I know 15 fives are 75? Because 15 times 10, 15 times 10 is 150, and half of 150 is 75. So that's how I know that 15 times 5 is 75, and two more 15s is 30. So 5 15s and two, 2 more 15s, 7 15s, that's what we need, 7 15s, 105. And then we have negative, and 11 times x is negative 11x, and then negative times negative is going to be positive, and 11 times 9 is going to be 99. You have to take your time, it's not a difficult thing, these are not difficult concepts, but it's very easy to make a careless error, you just have to take your time. The reason why people get these questions, these type of questions wrong is not because they are very difficult or because they have trouble understanding the concept. As I said, concepts are very simple. They just are not paying attention. So we have, now we, now we combine our like term. We have 15x and we have negative 11x. That's going to go to 15 minus negative 11 is going to give us 4x. And then we have 105 plus 99. How much is 105 plus 99? How the hell do I know? I know 105 plus 100. 105 plus 100 would have been 205. 105 plus 100 would have been 205. So 105 plus 99 will be one less than that. It's, instead of 205, it's going to be 204. And that equals 55x. Let's subtract 4x from both sides. This is positive 4x. Let's subtract 4x from here, 4x from here. And we end up with 204 equals 51x. 51x. I'm going to write that as 51x equals 204 
only because that's the convention, that's the norm, that's the tradition that we always write the unknown on the left hand side. So I just find it awkward. So how many 54, how many 51 do you suppose will equal 204? How many 51 will equal 204? Is 51 a prime number? Can you tell me very quick? If you had to tell, I'm digressing here big time, I'm, I'm digressing here. Is 51 a prime number? The answer is no. Answer is no. How do we know it? Well, we start, uh, we start asking ourselves, starting from, starting from the lowest prime number that you can find, and we keep asking ourselves, is it divisible by each of those prime numbers? Is it divisible by 2? Obviously not. It's an odd number. Is it divisible by 3? How do we know if a number is divisible by 3? As I said, I'm digressing here big time. How does one tell if the number is divisible by 3? If the sum of the digits, SU and sum of the digits is divisible by 3, the number itself is divisible by 3. This number right here, this number right here, 51, is divisible by 3 because 51 is made up of 5 plus 1. 5 plus 1 is 6. Therefore, that number is divisible by 3. We could divide it by 3 if we wanted to. How many 3's in a 5? 5 has 1 3. 5 has 1 3. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 1 becomes 21. And 21 has 7 3's. So it looks like 17 times 3 is 51. 51 is divisible by 3. And so is this number. 2, 204 is divisible by 3 because 2 plus 0 plus 4 is 6. The sum of the digits of 204 is 6. So if you wanted to, you could divide 204 by 3 as well. 204. How would we divide 204 by 3? Well, it's very simple. It's very simple. How many 3's in a 2? 2 has no 3's. 2 has no 3's. That 2 goes and joins a 0 becomes 20. How many 3's in a 20? 20 has 6 3's. 6 3's are 18. 6 3's are 18. The remaining 2 goes and joins a 4 becomes 24. And 24 has 8 3's. And if we did that, if we divided both sides by 3, we would end up with 17 on this side, we will end up with 68 on the other side, we will end up with a bigger mass on our hand than what we have right now. So we are not going to go that route. And we shouldn't have to go this route, we shouldn't have to do all this work to realize that we will have, what we will have at the end is a mess. Just look at the bloody thing. Just look at it and just think logically. You have to think logically, rationally, calmly. You have to remain calm and collected during the exam. Just look at it logically, calmly. 50 times 4, listen to me, 50 times 4 is 200. Would you agree? 50 times 4 is 200, and 1 times 4 is 4. 51 times 4 is 204. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to do any of this nonsense, because if we did do, if we do this, if we did do this nonsense, we'll, we'll end up saying that 17x, 17x equals 68. And where would you go from there? It's just a bigger mass. It's much easier to see that 51 times 4 is 204, than it is to see that 17 times 4 is 68. You understand? So divide both sides by 51 and we get x equals to 4. That's our answer. That's the answer that we are claiming. Now we have to do the verification. We are going to have to put it back in our original problem and make sure that it is in fact the correct answer. Make sure that it does in fact, it does in fact satisfy the equation. Let's do it. We are going to do it here. I need the room so we are going to erase this step and that step. So we have 3 plus x plus 7, x we are claiming to be 4, so 4 plus 7 over 11, as you can clearly see, 4 plus 7 is 11, 4 plus 7 is 11, 11 divided by 11 is going to cancel out, we are just left with 3 here, minus x minus 9, x is 4, 4 minus 9 over 5 has to equal x, which is 5, which is 4, which is 4. I'm going to erase all of this thing now, okay? So here we have 3. Here we are left with 3. 3 minus 4 minus 4 minus 9. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Negative 5 over a 5 is a negative 1. There we go. 3 minus a negative 1 does in fact equal 4. It does work. It does. It does in fact work. You want to do one more? Now let's call it a day, okay? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.